Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another video, Gary here. I just wanna say thank you for all the new subscribers and all the likes that you guys have given me on my videos. It's meant a lot for me, especially all the comments and all the questions that you guys have had. I've really tried my best to respond to all of those. Um, of course, I can't get to everything, but I would do my best to continue to do that. But, you know, if you have any questions or concerns or, you know, requests for future videos, please let me know. I definitely try to look at everything that I see um, and comment on those. So appreciate all that input. Um, currently, I've been recovering from the flu. I've been pretty much knocked out for the last week. So I appreciate you guys' patience. I wanted to get this video out for you guys. Even though it's a very small video, I wanted to get this out as soon as I could. But anyways... This video is more for those um, with garages, but this is about mobile charging, not necessarily supercharging when you're on the road, but just mobile charging. If you have a garage, this is probably a good video for you. Even if you don't have a garage and you're just traveling from you know place to place or going on a trip, this may be beneficial for you as well. So I just wanted to guys wanted to give you guys my setup and and what I use to charge my vehicle at home and what's worked for me. But I do want to say and emphasize that what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm just here to give you my perspective and then definitely, you know, evaluate it and make your decision um, accordingly. So let's get to the video. All right, guys. So what we have here is the Tesla mobile connector here. Maximum output of 32 amps. At the end, it has a place where you can actually input different attachments here. This is actually a NEMA 1450 240 volt outlet. And then at the bottom here, you have the cord, which wrapped around this third party holder that I had installed here, which leads to the handle that you actually input into your car. When you're not using it, you can just slide it back in here in place. Very convenient. So this is what the actual mobile charger came with here. So it came in this mobile charging bag, which you can use as a carrying case, which is great. Uh, these are two other adapters that I have, a NEMA 1030, 240 volt, three prong, as well as a traditional 120, volt 5 or a NEMA 515 outlet here. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys the difference between charging with this as well as the NEMA 1450 and, and why it makes sense to charge with the NEMA 1450 or have that installed in your garage. This is only used for emergencies. I do not recommend you charge on a day to day with this because it takes way too long. And this is just a Model 3 I'm, I'm referring to. The bigger the battery, the longer it's gonna take. So keep that in mind. If you have a vehicle like a Rivian or something or a Lucid or something that has a bigger battery and you're trying to charge with a you know a normal 120 volt outlet, it's gonna take it's gonna take a while. So keep that in mind. I will recommend if you don't have a Tesla wall connector, make sure you get a uh, a connector in the in the garage for a NEMA 1450. That's probably the minimum that you should be charging at, and it works for me. That's all I had and it's been a lot cheaper for me. So I just wanna keep that in mind. The Tesla wall connector on the website can charge, or I believe it has a maximum output of 48 amps, which is great if you wanna charge fast or you just need that extra speed. But for those that just you know charge after work and do not really travel you know, into the morning and you just need it for daily commute, you're fine with a NEMA 1450. So I'm gonna kind of show the differences between the charge rates and then why it's important just to make sure you have it. All right guys, so I have the NEMA 1450 still installed. I'm gonna grab the charger, plug it into the vehicle, and we're gonna see what kind of rates we're getting. All right, so I'm gonna hit start charging because I have it on schedule charging to charge at nighttime. But we're going to see what the rate is and it should show up here. So we're getting 246 volts getting see the max 32 amps as you can see here is ramping up charge rate i, I got it set to 100 percent, but th that doesn't really matter um output right now is at five kilowatts and we'll see where that goes i think it goes to about maybe nine all right So you can kind of see that we're getting eight kilowatts, 32 amps is the max, and we're getting 243 volts. And it's saying that to get to 100% right now, it's gonna take 240 volts. So that is our 240 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes, sorry about that. And that is with um, the NEMA 1450. So we're gonna, I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna plug it in with the standard 120 volt outlet and we're going to see if how much that that time changes 
and how substantial it is. So be back in the guys. So you see the NEMA 1450 is empty now. I went ahead and changed the adapter and plugged it in to a traditional outlet. So we'll see. You can see it's green. We'll see the difference. And using that connector as opposed to the NEMA 1450. So I'm gonna plug in. So remember the last one was at two hours and 40 minutes to get to 100%. So I'm gonna hit start charging. And I just heard it click. Now keep in mind guys, I just had the NEMA 1450 installed and it said that it would take two hours and 40 minutes to get to the same amount of, or the same percentage of 100%. So that is how substantial using that connector is compared to using the NEMA 1450. And why I would say that at a minimum, please make sure you have a NEMA 1450 connector installed. Now you can use this, this is great to get some kind of some kind of, uh, of electricity when you're you know parking overnight somewhere um, if you just don't have access to any other charger if that is the case make sure you bring this connector because it will give you a few miles um, of charge and you know sometimes a few miles can can you know make a lot of difference so keep that in mind all right guys so that kind of shows you just the real world differences of charging with just a traditional outlet 120 volt with a 12 amp max compared to a NEMA 1450. Now the Tesla wall connector will go up to 48 amps and it will charge faster, but the NEMA 1450 is a good middle ground. And for me, it's worked because I typically will get home, even if I get home at midnight or whatever, by the time I leave the home or my house at seven, 8 a.m. in the morning is already you know, pretty much charged all the way up. So I've never had an issue. But sometimes if you're, you know, only coming home for three, four hour stints and then you're going back out on the road to do things like that, you may require a faster charge and to get as much juice as possible. And for those people, I recommend you get the wall connector. But for the majority of people, most people do not need a wall connector. So and, you know, they're not pricey, but um, it seems like that's flooded out here. A lot of, you know, different types of chargers that you need. All you really need is a NEMA 1450, and I think that will be sufficient for most and majority of you guys. So just wanted to throw that out there. Also, the Tesla mobile connector does not come included with the vehicle anymore. I do want to stress that, that if you go to configure your order, if you go all the way down the page, you will see at the bottom where it'll allow you to select a mobile charger or a Tesla wall connector to be included with your vehicle purchase for I think like 250 for the wall of the mobile connector and maybe 400 or so for the Tesla wall connector. So keep that in mind. If you do not have an electric vehicle, I recommend you get at least the mobile charger because it can be handy. I use mine to charge for my day-to-day -day life and drives and, and, and things like that. But I also can unhook that or, and take it with me if I'm going to a, anywhere up a mountain or something and just get some trickle charge from you know, where I am. It's just a nice convenient thing to have. I've heard stories where people um, may have ran out of juice or in, not necessarily with a Tesla, but with other connectors or other cars, the charger wasn't working and they actually used their mobile connector to plug into like a gas station wall outlet or something like that. So keep that in mind. It's good to have a mobile connector because the Tesla wall connector cannot be taken just place to place. It's pretty much installed at your home. So a mobile connector is good just to have a backup plan if you necessarily need one. So just want to throw that out there. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or anything like that, please feel free to drop those in the comment section below. And I also want to continue to thank all my new subscribers and people that's liked my videos. It means a lot. I will try to have some more videos coming out shortly. And, you know, if you're looking into buying a Tesla, please feel free to use my referral code below. If not, use any, just use a referral code in general because it will get you 500 off and I believe a thousand or 800 off if you get a Model S um, as well as you know three months of full self-driving so please make sure you use a referral code because Tesla would not recommend you use that because they're saving money if you don't use it so just want to throw that out there but thank you guys for watching my videos and until the next time enjoy your cars enjoy your Teslas and I'll talk to you later peace